This is CNN Breaking News. Political analyst Peter Matthews teaches political science at Cypress College, joins me now from Los Angeles, and thanks for doing so. Uh, weeks and weeks of negotiations, Democrats finally delivering for uh, President Biden. How big of a win was it for him politically? It was very big and indispensable after the losses in Virginia and the uh, lower turnout for Democrats in New Jersey. But the main thing is that he got the hard infrastructure. That's the ones that builds roads and bridges and broadband, things that people can see, feel, and touch. Got that through with bipartisan support. But now the move is to go on to the other, the other infrastructure, human infrastructure, including um, after-school programs, getting uh, the elderly to be helped in their homes, um, and having money for education, other kinds of things that are really important, uh, and also electric cars. So there are two different things here, hard infrastructure and then more of social spending that's coming up in the future. And the two different factions of the Democratic Party the progressives and the moderates were able to get together on both finally and say, you do this now, we'll vote for this now, and then we'll vote for the other one later, just by November the 15th. So where, where then does this leave that, uh, the Build Back Better Act, the one that progressives uh, so uh, want and fought to vote on uh, at the same time? Uh, what, what, what now for that? I think they're going to move forward for it. The question is, how large will it be? Don't forget, it started off with $6 trillion request from progressives, was brought down to $3.5 that President Biden pushed. And even they couldn't even get that. They got $1.75 trillion right now on the books. And if progressives can agree to that, at least some major, major accomplishments, like two years of free community college, will probably be dropped from that one. So some of it was dropped, some of it was kept. And the idea of what's kept is going to really help expand social spending to help make people's lives better and allow American women to go back to work, for example, with help in the home with child care and elder care, et cetera, those kinds of things. So I think they're going to move yeah. forward. The question is how much? There, there, there's a lot in there that's very popular with the public, uh, uh, both in Build Back Better, but also uh, the infrastructure bill. It's, it's going to be good for the country. It's going to be jobs, investment, uh, structural improvements, as we said. Yet it was so hard to get it over the line. What, what does the process, and talking about Build Back Better as well, what does the process, the fractious, almost chaotic protest say uh, about politics in the US right now? It's really fractured, and it's, it's uh, not smooth enough to where the majority wishes of the people can get pushed through. Like you said, the $3.5 trillion version of it was supported by at least 60% of the American public, and even Democrat, Republican support, half of them supported it. But the problem is that some people, like uh, Senator, Sin uh, Senator Sinema and Senator Manchin, uh, were more, in quote, moderate Democrats. They have their own constituencies, including the pharmaceutical companies and other companies like coal mine companies that actually are pulling them in different directions than the progressives. So it's very difficult to get the Democratic Party to unite uh, on, the, on common ground because they have different interests and different sponsors in the party. Uh, you take AOC, for example, compared to Manchin, and that's the problem right there. That has to be worked out. And I think Nancy Pelosi is doing a, a fine dance to get it done right now. It was, it was obviously very important uh, politically. It's, it's an important bill for the country, there's no doubt about that. But it was important politically uh, for the president in terms of the, the midterms that are coming up, 2022. What damage, if any, did the Democrats do to themselves with the infighting, that rocky road so far, and the rocky road likely ahead? It makes the party look a little splintered, doesn't it? What are voters going to think? It certainly does. It's dam it has damaged the party because, don't forget, these plans that both should have been passed way back in the beginning of the year, it's been around for nine months, they've been haggling over it from di with different factions, and they couldn't even get, and the president couldn't even get them to unite for so long, for nine months, and that was seen as ineffective leadership. So the Democrats have to do this today, and they have to go further and get the second part done, the Build Back Better Act, which is also the bigger part of it, and that has to be done as well, because that's what the progressives wanted to put them both together at the same time, the president wanted at the same time, he didn't get it, but now they can do it just a couple of weeks apart. And it'll help the party if they can unite and pass that second part of it as well. We, and and the, you know, the, the, the midterms aren't far away, but they are. They've got a bit of time. I mean, is this going to help him, the president, in terms of going into that, uh, that election? It certainly will help him, and the momentum will be there. And then he's also got to deal with COVID, because that's going to be around for a while as well. And you can see him with the mandates that he's coming across. Some people are protesting it more like 25% of Americans don't want the vaccination at all. He's got those kinds of problems to overcome as well to show he's an effective leader. And it's a very tough situation. He's finding multiple challenges at the same time, which very few presidents find this many at one time. All right, Peter Matthews, I really appreciate it. Thanks for the analysis. Thank you, Michael.